When I write ya All across the USC, Compton, Watts Bay to LA From on to California From valley to valley We represent that killer county So if you keeping it real on your side of your town You tune in to Gangsta Chronicles Gangsta Chronicles We gon' tell you how it goes uh, If I lie, my nose will grow like Pinocchio We gon' tell you the truth and nothing but the truth Ooh. Gangsta Chronicles This is not your average show You're now tuned in to the real MCA, Big James, and Big Steel This is strictly from the streets Hello Everybody asks me about the little Rob thing. They don't sound like no beef, though. Nah, me and Rob ain't got no beef. That's the like, you know, about that. You, you, know, you know the last time me and Rob worked together? Mm. This is how stupid this, like, people, some, because I, I guess some people just get out of jail and they go on the internet for the first time in their life. Mm. But me and little Rob haven't worked together since 20, since 2000. Yeah, 20 years ago. And you're still talking about it. Mm. Like, Cause that'd be the highlight of some yeah, motherfuckers yeah. situation. Yeah, motherfuckers you stem know, from beef. But I beef. tell people, if, if what are they gonna do about it? You know what I mean? Like how how is if they say I ripped them off? Well, how, what are they doing for it? If 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 Rob made a billion dollars tomorrow, are they gonna give them anything? Mm -hmm. And then I ask, here's the biggest question I gotta ask. People go, oh, royalty did this, royalty that. Well, you, at the end of the day, how many people have Little Rob helped in his career? How many artists he put out? He's so great. Zero. So you looked at as the as the shady record label dude. Is that what people saying is the beef? Because mm. you were the record label owner yeah, and they I put, were the artist. I grabbed my balls and put my own money up, mm -hmm. and you know had to recoup money when people were driving new cars and low riders and. And, and, and all kind of shit, loving their life, and then they spend a little much, too much money with the girl, and then you know they go. I mean, you get that typically <laughs> from uh, from artists mm -hmm. who deal with independent record label owners, feeling that it's a different side. Myself included, I dealt with niggas like. Lonzo and Unknown who owned independent well, we labels. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, and, and to look at it from an artist point of view. People would think, yeah, they robbed you. I mean, you didn't get shit. You didn't get no money. You didn't get no motherfucking this or that. They was riding around in benzos and had the big houses and shit while you were still living at home trying to take care of your kid, trying to buy pampers, you know. So you get that from some people. So what about the chicks? What about when there's chicks like I just... We were talking out in the back, right? Mm -hmm. I ain't seen no checks uh, as an uh, uh, as an artist when I mean, first came up. But, I'm yeah. saying, what but, but that's guys? what but that's what tend to happen from label who, owners. Who, who right? Who paid, who paid for that's your, what I was saying. Who paid for your posters? Who paid I did, because they oh. recouped everything. But so you paid for your no thing when you They when charged you first, me back for you're everything. Talking about the, you're talking about the first week. Of course they did. Yeah. So it's a loan. It's a loan. Right. You know what I mean? Now they didn't do their money right and you didn't get a lawyer and check out the shit. That goes back on you. It's a business. At the end my of the day. thing is, as an artist, I'm writing all my shit. I'm producing all my songs. Oh, and you're then doing I'm, all that. And then I'm still only See, getting I'm, 70 I'm, cents a record. I, I'm doing while, you, while somebody in the label position is taking 90%, and I'm doing all the fucking work. They you made a me? lot of money off you. Exactly. Yeah, they made a lot of money. I mean, but that's what some cats go through. But we could get that money back. Yeah. As independent, I've already got it back. So that's the whole point. But some artists would feel, that's what they feel. When you say it's a 20 year long thing, people saying, well, Lil Rob or whatever you, and mm -hmm. you're going, man, it's 20 years ago. I mean, we did our injustice. I mean, what has Lil Rob done for artists? Has he put anybody on or whatever? So I get what you saying, like, well, let's well, sleep well, in well, dogs' well, lives. Well, for well let's go like this. You're, you're going an independent artist from being a big artist. You're, right. You're, we're starting from fucking dirt. Right. There, there was no, th th nobody was rich. I just told you our first deal was $2.50. My first deal, I didn't get a dollar. No, no, $2.50, the label deal. Yeah. It's, then I'm paying 80 cents on, on a cassette. Then I'm playing posters and everything. And then I'm halfing that money, that dollar with them. And then we get sued for $295,000. $295, then I had to pay 46000 to the BMG lawyers for that case. How much do I own? 
If he ain't put up none of that money to the struggle <laughs> or helping, I don't owe you shit. You, you know what I'm telling you? Like, there's a difference. You, you're coming, you coming from a major label to to guy that took advantage, and you didn't stay on top of your game. I, I don't know your whole deal. You said you end up getting your money, but we're starting from zero. I'm paying. I told us I'm paying for your beats, uh, uh, your studio time, your mixing, your mastering, all your photographs, every fucking thing. Okay. I'm giving you advance. Who's writing the songs? I'm, I'm making most. I'm, every concept is me. Every hook is me. Who? Okay. And he they write their lyrics. Okay, but still they got some. Here's the track. Here, hey, hey, I want you to rap on this beat. Here's the hook on it. But I'm gonna still feel like as an artist, I'm still writing the part my own shit. Me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what though? Part that you. Just not to interrupt, but Eight's situation was a little bit, because I'm familiar with it, was a little bit different than the shit you had on with Lil Rob. Like, these motherfuckers, like, stole his publishing and all kind of other shit. Am I correct? Yeah. They stole I started out as a little kid from Compton, 17 years old, uh, hooked up with a dude who had his own independent label, Techno Hop. Okay. I wrote every song. Okay. Mm -hmm. He came in. I'm, nigga was doing the beats. Uh, this is your first deal? Yes, very first, very first time I ever recorded. Is this the records we were talking about that were blown? That were no, no, no. Okay. This is my, from the start. From when I decided I wanted to become a rapper. A nigga knew MC8 claiming the hood over here, 17 <laughs> years old, knew how to rap. So I go to his studio, I write three songs. This is Compton, I give up nothing, give it up. He takes those songs, he, I wrote them all. He provided the beat, he provided the label, whatever, but I still wrote my shit. I'm thinking I'm supposed to get my 50%, my publishing or whatever, I got nothing. They put the record out, it sold, it did whatever, I got nothing. No publishing, no five dollar check, no nothing. So the end. So you did a deal with this guy, and he gave you no advance. No. Did you pay any, any of the studio time? What do you mean? It was his studio in his living room. But it was his studio. Yeah. So was that free? What do you mean? So he gets to fuck me? No, no, I didn't say we're not going to that part. Yeah, that was. I, I'm just saying there was still. He put up some, something for you? Okay, and I'm putting up my lyrics. Okay. And I'm writing the songs. Without my songs, I'm he a, got no songs. I'm, I'm, I'm going to question you on, on this one. I don't know the whole deal. Okay. And, and, it has but, nothing to do with the deal. It has that, to do with, do you feel like because you're supplying the beat and you're supplying this that you get to take everything up front? No. no. So what are you giving the artist? Did you have a contract? I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I had a contract, but it was a fucked contract. It was a fucked contract. That's you what. You can fix yours. You're underage on that deal. That, but here, here's the thing. Do you feel you would ever got your other big deals without that? Eventually, yeah. Because I'd have put out my own. Never. You can never say that. Oh. Life is written. You can't change that. What do you mean? You think you would have got those other deals? Do you think that? he would have got? Where that went. Do you think you would have got to where you was without those artists? Me, yeah. Okay, so then me, yeah. Goddamn right, nigga. What the fuck? Shit. Nigga, that's so rude. You're not believing me. That's so rude. You know what I love about Well, I was already there, though. You know what I love about it? And different. I was on my way. I, I, I was already there, though. You know what I love I signed artists because I got they the deal. Nigga, I'm real. Shit, nigga, hell yeah. I didn't nigga. know you. Nigga, about that shit and get mad at the motherfucker. Because you when I would have been there, you goddamn right. When you looking at it and all these motherfucking labels was looking for them, a nigga off the corner who was spitting that shit, you goddamn right. Or oh, I'd have been smart enough to do what everybody else was doing. Go fuck signing that independent mm -hmm. little deal and go put out my own music like you did, mm -hmm. like a Master P, like a Lonzo, like a Unknown, like everybody was mm -hmm. doing. But it was just some of us who were young kids who were naive. All I wanted to do was make fucking music. So did he make oh. money off of those three songs? You got damn right. And he probably still got those records. He put them records out. He got a major deal from that Where shit. Where he at now? Who knows? He living, chilling? Chilling and living. And, and man, Lonzo still living and chilling. Oh, we Lonzo, we we had, we Lonzo the dude from... Um, the World Class yeah, Record Group, NWA. I, I, I got funny stories on that from, from Mr. K. That's how I, him and Lonzo was buddies. They all had labels. Egy Egyptian Lover had Egypt Empire. L.A. Dream Team had L.A. Dream Team Records. A known DJ had Techno Hop. And Lonzo had <coughs> Crew Cut. And they went... Through, they found the talent of young niggas. 
Me, I was a nigga in the hood banging. I started loving rap like you, Run DMC and Kumo cool D and all that. So I'm hungry for rap. So I'm just dreams of, uh, I don't know shit about yeah, publishing and fucking none of that. All I know is, motherfucker, I want to rap. Well, how the <laughs> fuck did, did he survive after getting three songs? You see him making money and you're Because I don't know shit. I'm still 17. I'm naive. When he put my record out, he wanted to kill him. I wish I knew. See you. You you feel like I felt four or five years later. Okay, but at the time, I'm a 17 year old kid. Right. A nigga tell me I'm finna make a record. Nigga, I get in the studio. I write the songs. They put them out. I got a 12 inch in the swap meets. Nigga, yeah. I'm going in the swap yeah. meet, seeing my cassette up. I'm all good. I'm like, nigga, I'm on my way. I'm not knowing that a nigga making money. I, I have no idea how the shit work. I have no idea. All I know is I got a fucking record out, okay? And I'm not in the hood banging, getting shot at, and whatever, whatever. I got a record. No money, not a dime. Man, I didn't get a dime, oh, okay? Yeah. So that happened. I ain't tripping. I'm like, hmm, you know, whatever. So then the nigga go out from that. He go out and get a deal for Compton's Most Wanted. Because we signed a little contract. Oh, so that was your first record. That's my first record. This is Compton. It was a 12 inch single. Put it out. From there, he walked in the Capitol and gets a deal. Because he telling them. He ain't giving no money in no Man, guy. come on. This nigga got a deal from Capitol. I got CMW. They like, oh, CMW. Is that like NWA? Like, yeah, you know, listen to that. They listen to This Is Compton, the first 12 inch with the three songs. Them motherfuckers is like, let's do a deal. Next thing you know, I'm going to New York. I'm signing a contract, whatever, whatever. Nigga hand me about what? A couple of grand? When he probably walked with about 150000 Nigga, I'm a young nigga, poverty stricken in Compton. And a nigga hand me a check for two grand? Nigga, I'm... Nigga, I'm on. Man, let's go find this motherfucker, man. Hey, I'm hey, on. Hey, I'm not knowing. I'm a naive and, kid. And that's the yeah. same reason I took that. You know that. what we go do? I should call Wines on his ass on this show right now. But you know we got the thing where we can call him. Man, I, nigga, I'm, James, I'm a naive kid. I don't know. I don't give a fuck. Nigga, I'm in Compton at the swap meet with some fresh Cortez, some T-shirts, and some khakis, and a fucking Suzuki Samurai, nigga, and I'm on. I don't... I, what? You can't tell me that a nigga just and you bumping your shit. Man, you can't tell me a nigga just a business. nigga just walked out of corporate motherfucking America with a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar check. I don't know shit. So Bec when you signed the con the second contract, who was that with? Same nigga. Him? Same nigga. I wouldn't know he got a bunch of mixed Ex right? because I start getting smart. Right. I start going, wait a minute. So last week. I'm writing every that. fucking song. <laughs> I ain't getting no money. Every song is saying Aaron Tyler on that motherfucker. Not his name, not the producer, my name. I wrote every fucking rap song. Okay, I fixed it, but still, I'm not, I'm, like something wrong, man. I'm broke as a motherfucker. Nigga, I'm going on the second month, I'm going on the third album through Sony, through Epic Records, and nigga, I'm still living out the house with my mama. And I'm on my third album. And I'm like, something ain't right. So I start complaining. And, oh, nigga, you don't know nothing. Oh, nigga, nigga, this is a nigga talking to me. Oh, you know, nigga, you don't know nothing. You don't, this nigga walking out of the, every year he walking out of the corporate office with 200 and handing me five, six thousand dollars $6,000. Boy, I wish we knew each other back then. <laughs> so eventually they got smart. They got he smart. You back then, though. Huh? He, he wouldn't have told you. He'd have been happy. Just like, just like the same deal. When I left that, my deal, two dollars fifty. I took that deal because the swamis were getting old. I wanted to be in the big store. You want to get in? So we took whatever. You gonna take what? You gonna? Th no this bad. is what I say. <laughs> I live. I tell a tale of, if you come from my era, we all got fucked. Yeah. In the beginning, it, it's 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 gonna happen. But my thing is, eventually, some of those niggas need to start going, okay, you paid your dues, let's make it right. Exactly. But some of them niggas well, go, fuck well, that. That's what, see, I didn't get to the EMI deal 
That's what happened with me. My partner, when we did the Universal deal, he sold the whole label. Not my, he was distributing me. He sold his label for five million. Mm. He gave me nothing out of it. And I said, bro, but he goes, you're gonna have a better deal with Universal. He said, and then he said, don't worry, I promise. He goes, I've been doing it forever. Blah, 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 blah. And I said. Oh, that's the same dude that talked like that? that yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. I think he sound like a Vladimir or something. No, he's from uh, Argentina. Okay. And um, I, um, so when he, did that, when he did that deal, I ended up getting 375 a record at Universal. And then I, 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 he goes, don't worry, you'll be out of it soon and blah, blah, blah. And he can't, you know, when they, when they sell labels, they can't be in the same business for five years. So he ended up, you know, if you sell it, you don't want to be in competition. They don't want to be in competition with a guy that does that, sold that record label. So he came to work for you. He said, I'm going to work for you and I'm going to get you a better deal. So when we got the EMI deal, I got the full, the full deal. You know what I mean? That was my later deal. I got the full 795 a record. And everyone he signed, I made a dollar off each record because he couldn't sign it through his name. You know what I'm saying? Right. He would sign it through me and he'd keep it so... I went through all the first bullshit. I mean, I was like 70% of his label when he sold it for five million. Mm. Cause I, I had so many records, you know? So that, like you said, we all gotta go like this. And that, that was the greatness. And the, a regular dude of that, like you're telling your story, I would have wanted to kill this dude, everything. I was so mad so many times. I was so desperate a couple of times, I almost sold the whole label for chump change, you know what mm. I mean? Because being so desperate, like, and he, and he told me, he's the one that told me, don't, I could give you this money and then what are you gonna have? Believe me, hold on to it, you're gonna, so that's what I did, got the better deal, oh, that's that new phone that, that bent, mm -hmm. it, was, it was the other day, that's just crazy. So when I did that, he kept his word, so that's why I never, I have love for him, because he, you know, you gotta learn a little bit. You know? right. So that's why you say, if you never would have struggled and got the first deal and got fucked on the first deal, you wouldn't have probably never been successful. Definitely. Is that what you mean by that? You got to lose to win sometimes. I looked at that. I, lose like that. I looked at it like that, James, in the long run, because if you hear the tales of a lot of us as artists in the beginning who come from that era, that Lonzo unknown, that early rap era, it happened to a lot of us. Hey, you know what we should call that motherfucker? You know what's funny? No, we're, gonna that, we're gonna say that. We're gonna say that for that motherfucker. We're gonna say that motherfucker for. We gonna we gonna say that for a show we call Four with Eighty. Industry is shady and shit, and get shady motherfuckers on the show and get them to deal with the situation that they created. So he can see you in your face. You goddamn right. And see you in your face. But let's sit down and discuss how y'all felt like. You know what I'm saying? Because. They dealt with a lot of motherfuckers coming through their camp. Well, you know what's funny was Lonzo is the Mr. Ken Harris. The, he's on the, the the store, the indoor swapments in LA, the Crenshaw and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. He said Easy used to come, and they'd bring their thing. But before they'd get there, Lonzo and them would pull up and sell bootleg all the records and sell it to him, and they go, "Oh, Easy's coming." And they put everything under the thing. <laughs> Shady is a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of shit. Motherfuck, motherfuckers is the type motherfucker would go out and find, like, say you, you know, you you trying to rap, you, 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 you. Motherfucker come in and see all of us, knowing we ain't got a lawyer or a motherfucking pot to piss in, or go, nigga, I'm finna put a record out. I'm going to put you on it, you, 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 and you, and put that motherfucker out. And then when you come knocking, the nigga be like, <laughs> like the motherfucker didn't make no money? Hell no, nah, I didn't, didn't do shit. But you ain't got a contract with a nigga or nothing. So nigga going to look at you and be like, you want to do another one? That's how they would get you they in the days. A little bit more money. They ain't give you shit. Oh, what do you mean money? I'm talking about on the next one. They ain't giving you nothing on the next one. Damn. That motherfucker shit. Niggas was ruthless. That motherfucker's hard. Man, them niggas was ruthless. He used ruthless, to be over there with go to fingers. I don't I don't see how my right checks there get away with on the spot. It. I mean, you gotta be the They've been doing it for years brain. though. For, They've been doing it for what? Before I mean this before rap even started. 
The well, black artists been getting fucked in the Mexican artists and the Chicano artists been getting fucked for decades well, that these labels the contract and understand that motherfucker. I'll get a lawyer or somebody that know how to understand it. And then back then in the days, James, you still getting fucked. Well, I, because the lawyer you, looking at you. lawyer looking at it like this. I'm still making my bread. So you, you I'm look, still making my motherfucking soul you're dollars an hour. The fact like you were looking back there and, I, yeah. and, 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 and I'm gonna tell you, like he's saying, when we're starving and hungry. I took my deal because there was no other deal around. Right. That was the deal. I so signed a like, contract I a because I signed, I signed yeah. a contract because I was a young nigga gang banging in Compton Since and you. didn't see no other fucking hope of getting up out of this motherfucker. I wasn't finna play no sports. I wasn't finna be no doctor, no lawyer, no policeman, none of that shit. I saw it as an opportunity because it was something I was passionate in. Okay, so so it, at the end of the day, we can't complain, right? I don't complain about it. I just tell the story of you mad, I got Ma, fucked. I'm mad. <laughs> I tell the story. I tell the story about I got fucked, and the the longer I went on in the music business, I was able to learn contracts and publishing and right. splits and all that, and no. When a nigga put a contract in my face, I can go now. Oh, hell no. Nah. Oh, hell no. Nah. Oh, hell no. Nah. You can keep that right there. Right. Let me know when you get back with me with something proper. Finally get-